Adam und Herrn. In drei Tagen begehen wir einen weiteren Jahrestag der Terroranschläge vom 11. September 2001. In ganz Amerika und in vielen anderen Teilen der Welt wird es kleiner und größer, offizieller und inoffizieller Zeremonien geben. Außerdem wird man in der Zeit vor dem Jahrestag auch wie sie heute hier in Tübingen zusammenkommen, um über die Herausforderungen von Terrorismus und Extremismus für unsere Gesellschaft zu sprechen. Diese Thematik ist komplex und sehr wichtig. Ich danke Ihnen allen für das Engagement, das Sie heute in die Diskussion einbringen. As I said, the issues could not be more complex. Terrorism is not a new phenomenon. It has been with us for centuries. The destructive power and global reach of modern terrorism is, however, unprecedented as the entire world witnessed on September 11, 2001. Transnational terrorism is the foremost security threat our countries face today. The greatest threat and the most wanted terrorists come from the Al-Qaeda network. Their activities have infected a range of the regional challenges that confront us, even as we move forward in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Iran, in Iraq, and in Israel and Palestine. Last week, Israelis and Palestinians, in fact, resumed direct talks in pursuit of a two-state solution, where both countries can live side by side in peace and security. The search for that solution has been a source of tension and passion for people of all faiths within this region and around the world for decades. Before the talks started last week in Washington, President Barack Obama sat down with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, Jordan's King Abdullah, and President Hosni Mubarak of Egypt. They sat together as leaders of their countries. The peoples of their countries speak different languages and practice different faiths. But as President Obama said, quote, they all basically seek the same things. To live in security, free from fear. To live in dignity, free from want. To provide for their families and to realize a better tomorrow, end of quote. The question is, how can the countries of the world work to fulfill these aspirations? The relaunch of negotiations between Israel and Palestine could be a turning point in this process. Both Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Abbas deserve credit for their courage in moving forward, and they need our unwavering support. Alongside these efforts, and efforts in Afghanistan and Pakistan and other countries, an effective and broad counterterrorism policy is also required. A policy that takes real steps to undermine the appeal of Al Qaeda's worldview and to isolate violent extremists. Today and tomorrow, you will be examining the phenomenon of radicalization, of homegrown terrorism within our societies. This is also, I might add, one of the central themes of the Obama administration's national security strategy. The short term and in immediate challenge is obviously the security of our citizens. For this, reasons, for this reason, we have improved security at borders, airports, and other ports of entry into our countries. We have strengthened intelligence, information sharing, and cooperation at all levels, international, federal, state, and local, and timely analysis of threat information. Events over the past year have highlighted the need to do this and to do it better. But for the first time, the national security strategy of our country also addresses the longer-term challenges of violent extremism. 
What are the political, economic, and social forces that could put individuals in the path or on the path toward militancy? As we examine these questions, it is important to remember that the enemy is not terrorism, because terrorism is but a tactic. Our enemy is not terror, because terror is a state of mind. Nor do we describe our enemy as jihadists or Islamists, because jihad is a holy struggle, a legitimate tenet of Islam, meaning to purify oneself or one's community. There is nothing holy or legitimate or Islamic about murdering innocent men, women, and children. Indeed, Characterizing our adversaries this way is counterproductive. Describing terrorists in the Al-Qaeda network in religious terms lends credence to the idea that we are at war against Islam. The reality, of course, is that we have never been and never will be at war with Islam. It would also play into the false perception that they are religious leaders defending a holy cause. This is why Muslim leaders around the world have spoken out forcefully and often at great risk to their own lives to reject Al-Qaeda and violent extremism. Al-Qaeda, its affiliates, and those who subscribe to its ideology are resilient, resourceful, and determined. We have made it harder for them to recruit and train, so they are increasingly relying on recruits with less training and attempting attacks with little sophistication, but with very lethal intent. The alienation of Muslim populations in the Western world is a major component of the spread of this ideology. Just a few days ago, Jörg Zierke, the head of the Bundeskriminalamt, spoke out about the number of German citizens who have received paramilitary training or who have been influenced by extremism and the very real dangers that they pose to German society. Although Muslims living in the United States are in general more integrated, more prosperous, and also less alienated than Muslims living in Western Europe, there has been an increasing number of individuals in America who have become captivated by extremist ideologies or causes. Some of these plots have been disrupted. Tragically, we were unable to prevent others. It is telling that many of these individuals felt the need to hide their activities from their families and communities because they knew they would be condemned by those very same communities. And community is the key word here. It is important that we pursue broader avenues of dialogue with the Muslim community. Muslim culture, and in particular, the Islamic faith, is not wide, widely understood within the Western world. This lack of understanding, coupled with fear of extremist adversaries, can reinforce misconceptions and taint our ability to relate with the larger and overwhelmingly 